Hello everybody, today I have on screen the Toshiba A50EC 11K motherboard. So this laptop arrived at my desk with a no power fault. So nothing happened when you press the power button, there was no LEDs on the front of it. We checked that the power adapter was fine and it was, it had 19 volts on it. So there was obviously an issue with the motherboard. Now, we originally approached the customer and we said, look, this is an older laptop. It's probably not worth fixing. So we wanted to take their data from the hard drive and just put it onto a new laptop. However, when we took the hard drive from this laptop and tried to connect it using uh, an external drive bay, we were prompted for a BitLocker key. And the customer did not have the recovery key to get access to the data. So this put me in a situation that I needed to try and get this motherboard booted again in order to get access to the hard drive. So what I'm going to bring you through today is the steps I, I took to try to get this motherboard booting in order to get access to that data. Okay, so we've already established that there's 19 volts on the power adapter. So with the power adapter plugged in, we need to confirm whether that 19 volts is making it through the DC power jack and onto the motherboard. So the way I do that is I introduce my digital multimeter in volts DC and in the 20 volt range. And I'm going to introduce my black probe and connect that to ground. I know that's ground because our black wire of our DC, from our DC power jack comes to this point here and I can place it on this pad to get a ground. I'm going to introduce my red probe and we're going to trace that 19 volt as it enters the circuit. So this is the wire that brings the 19 volt in. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my red probe to this pad here and check for volts again. So when I checked for volts at this point, I found that there was 19.12 volts at this point. Now what that established for me is that the 19 volts is coming through the power adapter through the DC power jack and onto the motherboard. So there's no issue with the power jack, no issue with the uh, power adapter, and the issue is with the motherboard itself. So I have no schematic for this, so what we're going to do, do on this is just take it step by step. So I followed it through this next component, which I think is an inductor, and I checked for voltage here at the near side of the fuse. So when I checked for voltage at the near side of the fuse, I found that it was 19.12 volts here. So that's good also. And this is the main fuse that carries the voltage into the motherboard. So this can blow if there's a short. So what I wanted to do was just to check that there was voltage on the other side of this fuse also. So I placed my probe to the other side of the fuse and check for volts once again. So when I checked the voltage on this side, it was 19.12 volts. So we're now that we're good up to this point. So the difficulty here was that it wasn't immediately obvious where the voltage was going from this point. All I could see was that there was nine vias here that were carrying it to some other part of the board. So I just placed my probe on the center via and checked for DC volts once again and found there was 19.12 volts here also. At this point, we had to follow those via to the other side of the board. And that's what I did next. So after flipping the motherboard, I could see that those nine via were coming through to this point here. So I decided first of all I would check for voltage at this point here. So I introduced my black probe and I placed it to ground. This here is ground on this side of the board. So I placed it to ground here and introduced my red probe and placed it to the center via. And I checked my volts DC again and found that my 19.12 volts was also making it to here. So what I thought was maybe that it was somehow linked to this section here because this looks like a, a pretty big plane that might be the 19 volt input to a number of other circuits. So I put my probe here and checked for DC volts again. However, when I did this, I found that the 19.12 volts wasn't making it to this section. So this left me with a bit of confusion as to where it went next. So I'm going to give you five seconds to see if you can have a guess of where it might be going next. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, any winners, prizes? Well, if you look over here, you'll see that there are two diodes there and they're pretty big diodes. So it might not have been a huge leap to assume that they were part of the input uh, protection circuit. 
So I took a guess at this. I placed my red probe to this side of the diode and checked for volts once again and found that that 19.12 volts was making its way here also. So we were good to this point here. So the question was, was it making it to the other side of the diode? Obviously, there's going to be a voltage drop on it. But this diode is here to protect for a uh, reverse uh, connection. So what I wanted to do is place my probe here. And when I place my probe here, I found that there was 19.02 volts at this point. So that is our 19.12 minus 0 0.1 volts for the drop across the diode. So once again, we're chasing this across the circuit. And here are the vias which carry the 19.02 volts back to the front side of the board again. So we're going to flip the board back around again and check to see where this goes. So I follow those vias to the front side of the board again and I discovered that they came out here. So once again, we're gonna measure for DC volts just to make sure that, that 19 volts is making it back to the front side of the board again. So I place my black probe to ground. I find a ground here. So I place my black probe here and I place my red probe to the capacitor right here. And when I did that, I found that there was 19.02 volts at this section also. So we've got our 19 volts at this point as well. So the next component is one of the input MOSFETs. So this is one of the 8-pin input MOSFETs. So I want to see if my 19 volts is making it past this. So once again, I place my probe to the capacitor here and check for voltage. When I did that, I got 19.02 volts. So that tells me it's making it to this point also. So the next component in line is a current sense resistor. So we should have 19 volts here also. So I place my probe to this side of the inductor and once again check my multimeter. And my multimeter says 19.02 volts at this point also. So we're good the whole way to here. So I'm still wondering exactly what is wrong with this. This is just an inductor, so I presume that this is okay. They don't usually blow. So I'm gonna check for voltage here. I place my probe to this capacitor here, check for 19 volts. And sure enough, when I checked for 19 volts at this point, we also had 19 volts here. So continuing to check for our voltage coming through the board, I checked to see um, this looked like this was going to be a high MOSFET, low MOSFET configuration. But I was expecting to si find some voltage on this inductor here. However, when I place my probe to this point here and check for voltage, I found that there was zero volts at this point. And I'm not exactly sure what was meant to be here, but it certainly wasn't meant to be zero. At this point in the troubleshooting of the circuit, uh, we had 19 volts right up to here, but nothing coming out of this section here. And I wanted to see if this 19 volts was actually making it out to the secondary circuits because I couldn't find where it was going next. With these laptops, the 19 volts is meant to come in through uh, a number of safety checks on the way in. Um, there's a fuse there, there's a current sense resistor. Uh, a number of MOSFETs that are meant to shut down the 19 volts if there's any issue somewhere else on the laptop. But once it passes those safety checks, the 19 volts should be passed down to the secondary circuits. Those secondary circuits break that 19 volts down to 5 volts for the USB, 3.3 volts for the power button, uh, 1.2 volts for the memory, etc. etc. So I needed to see if that 19 volts was making it down to the secondary circuits, and that's what I did next. So how can we identify the secondary circuits? Well, the secondary circuits should take 19 volts as an input. Um, feed that 19 volts to either a combination of high side and low side MOSFET or just maybe sometimes a single chip. And then there'll be a big inductor on the output and that will be usually close to the component that it's powering. This is a perfect example right here. So we have our memory right here. So this is the circuit that's right beside it. So as we can see, there's something being fed down here through a very small little inductor. And it goes across a capacitor here. It goes to this chip right here. And we have an inductor on the output and a number of capacitors right here. So what this looks to me is small inductor on the input of the chip. 
uh, large inductor on the output it's connecting to the memory so this is most likely a circuit that breaks 19 volts down to 1.2 volts so what I did here we should be having 19 volts on the input of this here so when I place my probe right here and place my black probe to ground and you can see that up there so when I did that and checked for voltage there was no voltage at this point so obviously if we've no 19 volts input we're not going to have our 1.2 volts for our memory in the output so that was the first secondary circuit that I checked and there was no 19 volts going into that I just did a check on another couple of ones just to be doubly sure that that was the fault so next I just moved down the board tried to find another secondary circuit as we looked further down the board there was another couple of secondary circuits right down here so now I know that this one right here this circuit right here produces one volt on the output here this circuit here produces 0 0.8 on the output right here but it's a similar sort of configuration as the one above if we look at this I'm just going to introduce my red probe here again just use it as a pointer so we can see small inductor small inductor capacitor chip large inductor on the output large number of capacitors and then that goes off somewhere else now what we can actually do on this circuit to confirm my uh, suspicions that there should be 19 volts here is we can look up this chip so we have the data sheet for that TPS 51363 chip so if I just bring that over here this is our chip here <coughs> so this chip accepts 3, 3 volts to 22 volts on the input and the output voltage is 0 0.6 to 2 volts now it's given us a sample configuration of how this chip might be used right here and if we look at that if I can find it yes this is our sample configuration right here what you'll see is the V in for the input is on pin 17 16 and 15 so what it's telling us here is that it accepts an input anywhere between 7 volts and 20 volts and on the output it produces 1.05 volts in this configuration I think it can be uh, it can be used to have different voltages but in this sample circuit they're shown here it's producing one volt so if we look back on our circuit we can see pins 17 16 and 15 right here so we know that that's the input and we can see here that this is the output so we know that there should be 19 volts coming in here however once again when I connect my probe connect my black probe to ground and check on my multimeter my multimeter said zero volts at this point so this secondary circuit also didn't have 19 volts input on it and again if it's no 19 volts input then it's going to have nothing on the output I don't want to labor this point too much but there's uh, another circuit up above that we can also use as an example if we just remove these from the screen for a second there is another circuit right here so similar sort of idea small inductor on the input uh, large inductor on the output current sense resistor on the output also and what the way this works is we've 19 volts coming in here we have a high side and a low side MOSFET configuration as opposed to the single chip configuration right here this is for pulse width modulation but we're feeding our 19 volts in here and getting 0 0.8 volts out well that's what should be coming out of it but once again on this circuit I placed my probe to this inductor right here place my black probe to ground and when I checked for voltage here I was getting zero volts so it was pretty obvious at this point that the 19 volts was entering our laptop but was not making it as far as the secondary circuits to produce the secondary voltages so there was some breakage in that there and without a schematic this was going to be tricky enough to work out but what I decided to do because I was pushed for time with this job and I really only needed to get it booted once was I decided that I would jump her to 19 volts straight to the inputs of the secondary circuits and see if that would at least get the laptop booted so I could get the data from the laptop and that's what I did next okay so what I did to get this booting in the end was I identified 
that we had 19 volts coming in and across here and that we needed 19 volts on this and all of the secondary circuits but it was not appearing here so what i decided to do was to jumper from here to here and see if that would be enough to get it booted so that's the jumper wire i introduced from the top of this capacitor to this section here when i did that the laptop booted immediately uh, I was able to get the customer's data from the laptop, which was the purpose of uh, the whole process of trying to get this motherboard back booted again. What I did find was that uh, whatever we had bypassed here, the battery would not charge. Everything else on the laptop worked, but the battery would not charge. So it seemed like there was something wrong with the maybe the battery charging circuit. Uh, but like I said, this got the laptop up and running. I got the customer's data and we moved it on to a new laptop. I may have a follow up video just to see if we can work out exactly what is wrong with this laptop. It might be an interesting project, even though the laptop itself is really not worth repairing at the moment. But uh, I'll do a follow up video. Please leave comments, uh, negative and positive, whatever you want to say below. Believe me, you won't offend me. All comments are welcome. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.